Hey there folks and friends connecting dots here. It's June 11, 2014. Not sure if you saw a video I uploaded four days ago regarding Yellowstone National Park earthquake volcano eruptions. It's a warning. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. However, I'm going to share with you some of the information that I found during this process. And I'm kind of fresh into this. As you can see here, I just started this thread June 6th. And I, I come right from right from the get-go. I mentioned I don't have a degree in volcanology, no special degrees in earthquake studies. This is rather a collection of the information that I found regarding these earthquakes and, and volcanoes. It's up to you if you want to read through it. I, I'm like I said right from the very get-go also that I hope I'm wrong with this prediction. So it's rather about just uh, getting informed and the potential risk. I go on to mention how right from the, the get-go, May 9th here, where there was this. Uh, uh, CME that uh, was seen uh, cut off leaving the sun and how right after that we had a series of volcanoes that erupted and you know and some of them uh, were uh, quiet and all of a sudden the heat starts rising which is another factor I found in the volcano before they usually erupt there's a little bit of heat that's going on as well as the uh, elevated sulfur sulfur dioxide helium-3 and helium-4 and lo and behold we seem to have this uh, ongoing incident here at Yellowstone where Sure enough, there's elevated gases. So I'm not trying to scare anyone. You know, I don't have any ads on my YouTube videos. I've never made any money. In fact, I've poured my own money since I've been doing this my own time. So I'm just showing you here, since that one CME, we had a series of, of, of um, volcanoes that erupted around the world. Let me pause this for a second and show you a bigger one. So this volcano was photographed from a passenger airplane, and it rose 12 miles high. 65,000 feet according to the pilot now so uh, I am moving along here June 4th red uh, alert uh, first in five years uh, as Alaska volcano Pavlov erupts uh, forcing planes to navigate around it there's an aerial picture of the same volcano um, it's kind of a uh, quiet down a bit but it's still quite alive as you see here if you I'm not going to go over every thread like I said you'll the links are down below you can read the stories or hit the spacebar I guess during this video and uh, as you can see June 5th this one here been alive for a while now one of the things I found in, in parallel with many of these volcanoes they all seem to have heated up or started to erupting around December 2013 with a further increase after the CME of May 9th so uh, as you can see this one here is starting to throw rocks it had been alive for a little while now this other story here or this new uh, volcano like eruption that's very peculiar as i said you can hit the space bar go read the story and move along afterwards but uh, i just related an old story in 1816 how the snow was falling right after a volcano eruption now moving along here uh, again this is the yellowstone i'm just showing that there's 3.4 earthquakes i pull out an article here where uh, lo and behold june 3rd it was a swarm of earthquakes again now I, it's up to you if you want to follow along or not uh, or you just listen to the video I guess it's up to you I talk about the bison that were seen running out of the National Park in March the Rangers went on to say that it was the tourists that had scared them out and uh, well I knew that was an absolute lie it was raised on the farm been around a lot of animals a lot of wild animals and big thing like a bison is not afraid of a tourist and I post a bunch of videos just to show you on numerous occasions the bisons have attacked people and yes they've attacked cars they're not afraid of people they're not afraid of the cars they've been around them for a long time no tourists scared them it was actually the fact that there was a massive earthquake that hit that was the largest earthquake in 30 years the animals are aware the earth is rumbling so it's up to you if you want to connect to the dots here I uh, showed a little bit of information here oh, there was missing quakes here from June 5th uh, the, the, and rising gases at yellow yellow uh, stone park and again here the the, the tilt meters they were shut down now they've turned back on and coincidentally they're all showing how they're all tilting there's the, the Yellowstone uh, area where it might be erupting the, the how much ash area it shows here on three previous eruptions like I said I'm not gonna go over this because I want to work with this earthquake prediction now uh, here again talks about another study and coincidentally right here fresh one December 2013 here talks about 2,000 times the force of Mount St. Helen. Now, I live here on Vancouver Island. I know when Mount St. Helen went off, there was ashes that flew all the way over here to uh, Vancouver Island, Vancouver. There was ashes in Alberta. Now, it talks about how the uh, massive um, 
the chamber is over 55 miles long and it's sitting over in different three different states Montana Wyoming and Idaho I have to go through this because like I said this is all about the earthquake warning I hope I'm wrong on this so uh, again I showed here another CME came in on the June on June 4th so that could be another a reason why we had the elevated activity here that came shortly thereafter okay I'm not gonna go over that stuff if you want to go read that thread go ahead I make a point here how helium is a gas as a gas that's uh, also a volcano detector and uh, I'm trying to tie in the fact that the Sun has something to do with it and sure enough in this recent video I have that now this is interesting here this underwater volcano uh, that led on to a new discovery which I'll get in shortly after this but yes there's volcanoes underneath the ice and you can imagine what they're doing underneath the ice what do you think they're doing melting the ice what are the global warming people have been saying it's the end of the world because the ice is melting because the cars that you're driving too much which I'll prove on another video that it's not the co cars we have to worry about it's more about those super tankers and how much dirty fuel they're uh, burning while they cross the ocean delivering those goods made in third world countries okay so moving along here the latest information I hope I'm wrong on this but I got to share this uh, video here that I came across and uh, you know it's just so happened the timing is perfect this was a June 10th I found this just yesterday and I just started the thread like I said on June 6 so boy talk about connecting dots so let's see what we have here okay it became apparent to me that, that that's I, I look back at the history of the 20th century in in Los Angeles and uh, lo and behold uh, uh, there is a pattern. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty obvious. CBS News has been all over this, and uh, quite a number of popular science, quite a number of uh, uh, very respected news fonts have gone over the evidence. For your listeners, in a nutshell, he here is the evidence that I'm trying to place on the governor's desk so that the California Earthquake Prediction Evaluation Council can weigh it. Every single human being who died in Los Angeles in the 20th century died at dawn or at dusk in an earthquake. Any, all the seismic deaths that happened 70 miles within uh, the city center of Los Angeles, every single one of them at dawn and at dusk. And two-thirds of those great quakes, on top of showing a solar influence, two-thirds of them, if that's not eyebrow-raising enough, took place within hours of the newer full moon phase. So, this, uh, this, uh, That, this, to uh, me, David, is, that's a no-brainer if, if facts are facts. It is a no-brainer. That's what, well, I'll give you Popular Science's uh, uh, quote. They said, uh, this is a simple but brilliant observation. You can throw the brilliant out. I'm not a brilliant guy. I'm just a guy with eyeballs. This is, si this is simple observation, impossible to dismiss as coincidence. That's Popular Science. So uh, I'm, at, I'm hoping that uh, your listeners, if they hear a cogent uh, argument being made, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not expecting people to, you know, uh, crown me the seismic messiah or anything, uh, but... Uh, I'm asking for a fair, you know, what, what all Americans uh, should should lean toward, a, a fair hearing before the appropriate body of experts. So if okay. they, I, every time I, I speak on the air, I ask for people to uh, to go to the website and uh, leave a quick note with the governor of California so they could uh, uh, express their opinion on this matter, that he might uh, impanel that, uh, convene that, that, that panel. All right. Now, I want to understand this. You're saying that every major quake in Los Angeles. That killed people. That killed people. Big enough to have killed people. All right. the, major, the killer quakes. Yes, uh, they uh, between 1930s and the mid 1990s. 1933 Long Beach to uh, Northridge, 1994. You know, we we haven't had one in 20 years, and you're right. You yeah, know, can you give us uh, give us some of the specific examples so that jogs people memories their memories Long of these Beach, quakes? Long Beach, 1933, uh, 6.9 killed 120 people. Uh, Gorman, uh, the largest earthquake that took place in the in in the continental United States, 1952 in July, killed uh, 12 people. Thank God it wasn't closer to Los Angeles was a little bit of an outlier about 70 miles away uh, Silmar everybody remembers that one that killed 60 or 70 people uh, again 6 or 6 a.m. on the dot uh, the Sierra Madre quake uh, uh, killed uh, a handful of people Whittier Narrows uh, Northridge of course that everybody remembers uh, these quakes some of them is astounding uh, Gorman and Northridge and Landers all three Landers also one of the biggest earthquakes ever to have taken place uh, in in the continental United States all three within a uh, I think a two or three minute window and separated by decades uh, the largest earthquake ever to have taken place in the North American continent in the history of the world the great quake that destroyed Anchorage 47 minutes outside of the parameters discussed uh, just now with you. So there's compelling evidence. 
David, what's the what's the the uh, time frame before and after dusk and dawn? Uh, what 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 I've published and yeah. what the what the evidence shows there are yes. three hour symmetrical uh, windows 4:45 to 7:55 a.m. and or p.m. So if we're going to do the scientific the- uh, 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 we're going to do the scientific uh, uh, theories here. Uh, we, part of the scientific method is you have to have prediction and observation. So your listeners, uh, what I'm saying quite plainly is not that there's going to be an earthquake, but these are two of the highest uh, of, of the 14 higher probability windows for the uh, year of 2014, 445 to 755 a.m. and or p.m. on July 12 or September 9. Those are two of the uh, of the highest ones. Okay, so he says September 9th, but I went and looked it up, and it turns out the uh, it's not uh, September 9th. It's September 8th. So. Um, you can do your own research on this if you want. I just wanted to share some information. And lo and behold, what do we have here? June 10th, 11th, 2014. Three X-class flares have left the sun. And not necessarily coming right at the earth. But you can do your own research on that. We are still getting some of it. Okay? Not the major impact. But I just want to let you know that it, coincidentally, we just happen to have been hit with a, uh, you know, the first one was on a June, June 10th, and the latest one here was this morning, early this morning, another one came pounding at us, uh, or I should should say came towards the earth, not directly towards us. It, it's going to miss, him, miss us, but it does say in the reports that there will be communication failure, okay? It would disrupt satellite communications, okay? And more incidences could be expected. I'm not making up this stuff. You can go check this. Or I know I pointed out RT News is um, part of the, uh, yeah, the Crockett Corporations, but I just happened to pull out that story there this morning, and I know uh, <coughs> they had a good visual, so that's why I want to share it with you folks. Okay, now, if you saw below here, earthquakes in California since June 10th, 7 p.m., to 11, that was today at 8 a.m., I uh, managed to get this uh, footage here and, uh, well, take a look for yourself. Just so happens that the uh, coast of California here, right on that fault line, it was hit with four earthquakes. Now, they're not big ones. Now, also, when you see the numbers, remember, uh, the USGS has been accused before of playing down the levels of the earthquakes so there's a small possibility that they're actually higher than what you see but I just want to point out how they're all very close to the 3.0 area with the 4.0 also 3.0 down here so something to keep track of here I'm not uh, trying to fear monger just want to let you know that this is what took place so then I decided well let's take a look here in the last seven days 2.5 uh, magnitude and up higher across the world and this is what's taking place right uh, along the uh, California Fault. So, again, not trying to fear monger, just letting you know that, you know, there is ongoing activity here at this specific area. So, let's update it and see what happens. Okay, nothing's changed since I first loaded this page. Now, why is this interesting? Well, you know, I follow the uh, CO2 lies and I've been trying to debunk this for a long time, so I've been adding the information. Now, coincidentally here, um, the Canadian Climate Change, uh, it, well, they just happen to be located here at the University of Victoria on Vancouver Island where I live. So I'm not going to get into a, a full-on story this time, but I'm going to mention at a future date, if you listen to me, regarding the, uh, the information law f- information from the law students and how well basically they pulled a quick one on me that's right the university is censoring the truth from regular citizens here on Vancouver Island but I want to continue on here because what's interesting and I'll leave a link for this story also uh, as it, um, the Greenpeace co-founder he just came out recently saying that there was no scientific proof humans are the dominant cause of warming climate and it was kind of the reasons why one of the reasons why he left this but uh, the Greenpeace, but the latest one here, the University of Texas Research demolishes the main rationale for climate alarmist. So I'll leave a link here, folks, and if you want to follow along and watch the stuff and warn folks of what may be impending, okay? It's up to you. Take care.